Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us begin. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of life. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 7, beginning with verse 55. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me, make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with the second verse. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. You uh, to you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, uh, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him 
who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning, members and friends of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Our gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. We return to Jesus' final meal with his disciples, the Passover meal, and his final discourse. At this point, he is talking to troubled disciples, worried disciples, and he brings them, as ever, words of promise and of hope. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwellings. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from the one who knows that our hearts are troubled, who is with us in this time, who is known to us in every work of love on this worried and weary planet. That is the truth that Jesus spoke to his worried disciples that night, that Jesus still speaks to us today. And I am glad that we have one another, even virtually, to remember this amidst the daily unfolding shocks and losses of this time. And I am newly grateful for the Psalms and the words of grief and lament, but also praise and trust that they offer us. I read Psalm 31 this week and remembered Jesus' last words from the cross, into your hands I commend my spirit. And I remember too that this psalm is not only a prayer of trust, but also a desperate plea for rescue and deliverance. Listen to me, lead me, guide me, be a refuge speedily, the psalmist cries out. Jesus knew that psalm, and he lived it in all of its fear and all of its trust. Jesus knew the psalms. As a boy, traveling with his family to the temple in Jerusalem for the festival of Passover, he might have heard the Levites singing the Psalms. He surely heard them read and preached on in the synagogues of his youth in Nazareth, in Nazareth and then throughout the Galilee. His father may well have sung Psalms as religious instruction to him, as we know was a common practice in that day, according to 4 Maccabees. And his mother was a psalmist of her own, with a Magnificat that is still sung and prayed in churches and homes today. Jesus surely 
recited psalms with his disciples on that last night, for it was custom for the psalms celebrating the escape from Egypt and the exodus through the Red Sea to be sung around the Passover table. Since then, countless Christian and, of course, Jewish women, men and children have prayed, sung, read the psalms for millennia across cultures and contexts of every kind. And we are still called and invited to turn to them now. In his 1528 preface to the Psalter, Luther wrote this. A human heart is like a ship driven by the storm winds from the four corners of the world. Here, it is struck with fear and worry about impending disaster. There comes grief and sadness about present evil. Here breathes a breeze of hope and anticipated happiness. There blows security and joy about present blessings. These storm winds teach us to speak earnestly, to open the heart and to pour out what is at the bottom of it. What is the greatest thing in the Psalter but this earnest speaking amid these storm winds of every kind? I think Luther is still right about this. And we are in the midst of all of those storm winds in this Easter season, this pandemic time. Today, I want to celebrate the gifts of the Psalms for us. These poems and prayers are the voices of the faithful who have gone before us, and there is no shying away from any emotion. The psalmist poetry reveals humanity's deep reservoirs of compassion and desire for justice. It also exposes humanity's persistent appetite for hatred and desire for revenge. And so the power of the Psalms cannot be ignored. They can free us and convict us. They can comfort and challenge us. The Psalms give voice to it all. And so when you think of the Psalms, know that they are honest and true voices of those who have come before us, but know also this, that they are also God's voice of promise. Luther taught this. He saw the Psalms as a, quote, voice of the gospel. He heard within their cries and confidence, God at work, promising grace and forgiveness and healing and justice. That's another reason why Luther found the Psalter so powerful, why he called it a, quote, little Bible. Contemporary pastor and scholar Walter Brueggemann has written wonderfully about the spirituality of the Psalms, and he puts them in three categories to line up with the realities of our lives. First, he says our lives consist of seasons of well-being. When things are going well, when it feels easy to trust and believe in a gracious God, when work and family and community feel right, I pray that you know those times, even now. That great family Zoom call, a beautiful walk and gratitude for the colors of spring, a really good day at work, even from home, when you feel like you've made a difference. A conversation with a friend you haven't connected with for a really long time. And it's so great to hear their voice and to catch up on one another's lives. For this, there are psalms of creation and praise. The eyes of all wait upon you, and you give them their meat in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Psalm 104. But there are also seasons of anguish and suffering. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22. I know we know those times. We are living them now. Because behind every job report, there is a family struggling and children hungry. 
with every day of online school, there are those who fall further and further behind, who struggle with hopelessness or boredom, whose energy is not going to spelling or math, but to surviving somehow the family violence that has just gotten worse week to week during this stay at home time. For this, there are psalms of grief and lament. But there are also seasons of new life when we are surprised by grace, where there is joy in the morning, when light breaks through the darkness. And here, there are psalms of thanksgiving and wonder, even now. My 19-year-old daughter has been home from her first year of college since mid-March, and it was devastating to leave the university and the classes and friends she loves. We were all grieving for her, even though we knew that, of course, this is what we all had to do, and she knew that too. And like thousands of students, Good Shepherd College students included, she has been so resilient in the face of this. And family life has had some wonderful surprises. It's different to have a college age young adult in the house, and it's mostly pretty great. And we have a new appreciation for one another and fewer power struggles and more bike rides and playing with the dog. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Psalm 108. The Psalms are, Luther wrote, for the storm winds of every kind. These storm winds are what I see when I look at the Psalms frontispiece of the St. John's Bible. It's a contemporary illuminated Bible produced by the Benedictine monks of St. John's Abbey in Minnesota and made by a team of theologians and artists led by the calligrapher Donald Jackson. And this illuminated book of Psalms has helped me to see the power of these prayers in a new way, in a new light. Because when I look at this frontispiece, what I see here are the bright colors of the storm winds of every kind. The storms and the twilight, the calm, the passion and the emotions of life coming together in this beautiful and powerful way. And atop this collage of bright and bold color, there is a framework of five scrolls representing the five books of the Bible, of the Psalms. One, two, three, four, five, with the Roman numerals in gold. But not only that, what's amazing about this piece of art is that there are these square notes, which are like the medieval square notes um, of chant, and also the voice prints running throughout of the St. John's Abbey monks singing. So this amazing blend of technology and art coming together to bring together the power of the singing of psalms in our day. Again, it's not only that, because in this art, we also have the voice prints of other praying people from every different kind of religion and, and culture that we can imagine. Vertically and leading the songs of the monks are the voice prints of other praying people, of Taoist monks, a Jewish choir, a Native American song, the Muslim call to prayer, and others. And to me, this is a reminder that we are connected to all other people in our prayers when we join together in song that the source of life connects us and that our own cries of lament and fear and also joy and praise are shared by all people. And that the Psalms are a way in which we are connected not only to thousands of years of Jews and Christians praying and singing, but to singing and praying people all over the planet. And in this time of incredible fear, and isolation, and nationalism, and division, the Psalms can connect us to one another in the ways in which we are called to be connected to one another. 
I feel that these psalms are indeed a voice of the gospel for us, beckoning us to love and celebrate our neighbor and to trust that Christ is made known in that love wherever it is found and however it is prayed. This week, I invite you to search for psalms that meet you where you're at. Look at different translations. Find language that helps you enter in and let these ancient voices help you to speak earnestly. Whatever emotions you are having, let them help you open your heart and to pour out what is at the bottom of it. In all of this, Christ is with us and will show us the way and the truth and the life. Amen. believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins resurrection of body and life everlasting. Amen. And now we share together in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world that you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. We pray for those also trying to arrange for the safety of inmates, guards, and chaplains in our prisons and detention centers. We pray especially for Chaplain Chris at the Danville Correctional Facility who seeks to make you known through regular ministry. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We pray especially for Jody Davis's father, Ken, who was tested positive for COVID-19. We pray also for Cindy Watcher and her family at the death of Cindy's mother, Catherine Harem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. For us from the time we have and deliver us from evil. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is typically the time during our worship service when we would pass the offering plates around and offer our gifts to the Lord. So whatever your gifts are, your time, your talents, your treasures, um, find a meaningful way during this time to offer those up to the Lord.
brought forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.